Hi, I'm Patrick, a watercolour artist from Sydney and in this video I'll be painting this beach scene and the particular focus of this painting was the crashing waves here and getting a sense of movement into the water. If you like my work then obviously subscribe to my channel and also follow me on social media such as Instagram and TikTok, everything below in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy this. So I start off with a quick pencil sketch. This is a fairly simple scene, so only a few lines to indicate the horizon line and the distant headland. What's most important here is to mark out where I'm going to leave the top of the waves so that I can preserve those whites as I lay in my colors. I'm using three brushes here, a mop, my Chinese calligraphy brush because it can create nice textures and then just a fine round brush for some of the details. I start off by putting the light shadows of the waves in first and then I will paint around the top of the waves around the white parts. I'm going to use my smaller round brush now just to make that edge a little bit more textured. Also use my finger to pull out some of those blobs of water just to add a bit of texture under those waves. Next up is the horizon and the sky and I start with a band of raw sienna. That always gives me a nice glow on top of the horizon and a bit of warmth in the distance. Just a light wash. And then I'll mix my sky colour, which is cobalt, bit of ultramarine, a touch of neutral tint, just to grey it out. And then I'll start at the top and come down until it meets the raw sienna. And I've decided to turn those yellow uh, horizon bands into clouds. There we go, so here's where the blue meets the raw sienna. And then I just create a bit of texture around the edges to indicate clouds. I'm adding a bit more pigment to the top. I want the light to come from the top left, so I'm strengthening the, the right side of my sky a bit and also the top as the sky gets darker. And then I'm dropping that same mix with a little bit more neutral tint just to grey it out and create some cloud shadows there to add a bit more volume. While I've still got my raw sienna mix, I drop in a bit of burnt sienna, probably a bit of ultramarine blue and just indicate that beach and the front. And while that's wet, use my sky mix with a bit of alizarin crimson to create a purple and that will be the wet sand where the waves meet the beach. This gives me a soft edge of transition into the sand but quite a hard edge where the waves meet the ocean. Now I'm mixing a dark ocean blue so I add a bit of yellow, a bit of turquoise in it to give it a bit of a green tint and the first thing I want to do is to punch out those waves. So um, it's a fairly dry mix, fairly strong. And then I'll paint the dark shadows of the waves first. So the things that we can see underneath the white and where the waves are breaking. We use the dry brush technique here to break those edges up and to give a sense of surf and whitewash as it crashes onto the beach. The objective here is to create movement and texture. And I drop in a bit more darker pigment just underneath the crest of the wave. Where possible, always 
trying to get a gradient or a color shift even into the smallest areas that I'm painting and then add a bit more water to make that a lighter version as we're coming closer to the beach because we can see more of the sand through the water so it takes on a bit of the color of the sand while that's drying um, looking after the headland get a raw sienna again and just grate it down with whatever's left on the palette it's sort of a medium strength it's probably just below a mid value and then I paint in what will be the rocks of the headland for the top of the headlands I'm mixing a blue gray Now there's still a bit of water on the paper there. The sky hasn't fully dried, which is great because it means that I get some soft edges, but I also got to be careful that I don't let it expand too far. So that's why I'm staying clear of my pencil lines and just keep an eye on how far the pigment actually spreads. Also the sun's coming from the left. So I'm hinting at a little bit of shadow on the right side. And before the sand completely dries, I'm also going to drop in a bit of burnt sienna to get some texture, or some water drops. I don't want to make the foreground very defined or detailed, but I still would like then it's time for some more ocean water. So come back to my water mix make it even stronger and I'm leaving a bit of white just between the headland and the water so that those washes don't run into each other too much and also to indicate that you know there's a bit of waves crashing onto that headland as well and then I'm trying to draw a straight line as much as I can never quite works out but if there's waves on the ocean, the horizon line is actually never quite straight either because the waves can break out as far as the horizon line is. And then I just come down again with the bright brush technique, just leaving some white gaps here and there, which might become waves. If it's too much, I can always fill them in later. Again, I'm trying to break up my brush here so that I've got it quite rough and have random textures at the top. And then I stipple in And then I connect it back up with the ocean and then define the final form of those waves. Some of them I connect, some of them I leave white. And I'm not really following the photograph here, I'm just sort of going a bit with my gut feeling of what looks right. And that wave in the back that's kind of drawing too much of my attention towards the horizon line. So here's where I cover some of them up again. And before my headland also is completely dry, I'm just adding a little bit more shadow to get a sense of the light coming from the left. with a bit of water softening that edge so there is a smooth transition again it's very far in the distance so we won't 
be able to see any details or sharp edges. And just a subtle bit of shadow on those rocks as well, just to make them a little bit more believable and get a bit of a sense of light. It's going to add a subtle shadow underneath those breaking waves onto the beach because they're not totally flat you know water's got volume they're probably about three to five centimeters tall as the water comes onto the sand so they will cast their own shadow and that just adds a bit more realism to it i've added a few strokes dry brush strokes onto the sand to get texture but i think it's a bit too much so i'm just spritzing some water on it to soften that up too and let water do its work in creating a soft texture a few splatters now i'm just going to add a tiny bit of white gouache to the top of those waves adding some splatters Don't want those splatters to go too far up. It's really just about creating a bit more texture around those waves. I'm going to remove the tape just to see whether it needs any further adjustment. It's always amazing how a painting jumps at you once you remove the tape. All I'm going to do is just strengthen those shadows a little bit under the waves. They look a little bit flat. So I'm just dropping in a very thin wash of, of that blue. And I think I'm done.